Killers will never be the same. Next on Lifetime's Intimate Portrait. Playing Anna Devane on General Hospital made Fanola Hughes one of daytime TV's reigning divas. Is this all I had to do? He's dressed up in underwear. For you to look at me. For some obscure reason, I hit it on the head. I just understood what they were looking for. She still can steal a scene from anybody instantaneously just by entering the room. She's so proper royalty. On General Hospital, she was involved in one of the soap world's all-time great romances. <sighs> Death really moved. <laughs> what people latched onto was the chemistry between the two people. She earned awards and critical acclaim to go along with her fame. The outstanding actress in a leading role of daytime is Vanilla Hughes, General Hospital. But she got her first break working with two of Hollywood's biggest stars. Sylvester Stallone turned to me and he said, uh, you've got the part. But life posed new challenges when both her parents died. Finn took on the, the duty of both my, my mother and my father for me. Then she found a real-life romance to rival anything she'd experienced on screen. He's got a huge rock of salt in his hand and in it is a ring. And he said, will you marry me? Before too long, she started a family of her own. Bye. Bye. But her most surprising triumph was a return to the soap world after nearly a decade. The thing about being on a soap opera is being dead means never having to decompose. For her to come to all my children after all those years, that audience came with her. And went, oh, not going. she's back. Life has thrown her a few curves, but she's always picked herself up and started over without missing a beat. This is Lifetime's intimate portrait of Fanola Hughes. Lifetime's Intimate Portrait, hosted by Meredith Vieira. The other day I was coming off the elevator in the building where all my children shoots, and who do I run into but Alexandra Devane? Or was that Anna Devane? It is so hard to keep track since both are played to perfection by the Emmy Award-winning Fanola Hughes. And if you're wondering why Fanola is so sensational on All My Children, it's probably because her own life reads like a soap opera. Beautiful ingenue comes to America, lands a plum roll on General Hospital, and then mysteriously disappears, is kidnapped and held for ransom by a crazy makeup artist. Okay, so I made that part up, but the rest of it is true. This is her story, her words. During the 1980s, Fanola Hughes reigned supreme as one of the stars of General Hospital. Her character, secret agent Anna Devane, was involved in a long-running love affair with fellow spy Robert Scorpio. I don't want to have to deal with the thought of losing you again. But when Fanola left the show in 1991, she thought her soap opera days were behind her. Then, in 1999, ABC executives realized they never should have let her leave. I knew that ABC had to have Fanola, so I spoke with the writers at All My Children about the possibility. I said, don't toy with me. <laughs> Would she really be interested? Angela said, what do you think about New York? And I'm like, oh, I love New York. And she said, do you think you'd like to go there, move there, and go on All My Children? I was like, yeah, yeah, yes. Finola's new castmates at All My Children eagerly awaited her arrival. I thought it was great. You know, I think to bring somebody of that caliber onto a show, you can't help but elevate the bar of the show. She's a wonderful performer. Uh, she has great depth. I don't think there was a person on our show that didn't know, respect, and love her work and couldn't believe our good fortune that she was coming. Finola returned to daytime TV as Anna Devane's long-lost twin sister, Alex. I don't care whether you believe me or not. I don't have to prove who I am to you. I'm just trying to tell you everything because Dimitri loved you so much. But if you're going to turn this into a cross-questioning and try and trick me up with misinformation, then I don't have to tell you anything. Look, we're just trying to find out what's happened, Mrs. Oh, you don't have to call me Mrs. Marrick. 
Please, just call me Alex. Fans were glad Vanola was back. Then 18 months later, they were stunned when she told Regis and Kelly Ripa that her character Anna Devane was coming back too. All right, so what happened? You died on, uh, on General Hospital, but right. now you're back. Well, can the audience, can the American audience uh, understand this? Yes, a boat explosion this? was not enough to kill off Anna Devane. So she came back, Anna Devane, but now yes. she's back as twins. Yes, it's the show, they're going to change the show to all my Finolas. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember being very sort of excited that she was going to get to play Anna Devane again. The audience loved the character of Anna as much as Finola loves the character of Anna. So for everyone, it was an opportunity to, to see someone that they hadn't seen in years. The woman who would grow up to portray a spy began her life in a country known for its fictional secret agents. Finola Hughes was born on October 29, 1960, in an artsy London neighborhood. I grew up in a place called Notting Hill Gate, uh, which sort of became, you know, well known because of the movie Notting Hill. But when I grew up there, it was, it was sort of a, a bohemian dive. Finola was the first child of parents who could not have been more different. Her Italian mother, Maria, was a devout feminist who loved the performing arts. My mother was quite brash and straightforward and in your face, and she'd tell you what she thought of you the minute she met you. Finola's father, Bill, drove a taxi and was something of a philosopher. What my father really was, was he was an extraordinary character. This huge, ebullient kind of Irishman, you know, drinker and a party man, and everything was fun. Finola was the center of her mom and dad's universe, with a personality that combined a little of each of them. Bill was a sort of adoring father. He'd have done anything for her, whereas Maria was more sort of strict and matter-of-fact and business-like about things. It was more important to, I think, Finola's mother that instead of Finola cleaning her room, it was more important for her to be a creative person who was in touch with herself and who was in touch with the world around her. Finola's mom encouraged her creativity by taking her to a ballet class when she was just three. She took me to this uh, little door and I looked through the door and there were all these ballet dancers and tutus and she said, would you like to do that? And I was like, I felt a little shy at first, but then, yes. Finola started ballet classes almost immediately. When it was time for her formal education to begin, she was sent to a convent school, but she only lasted two weeks. I one day impersonated a nun that had a mole with a massive amount of hair coming out of it, which I drew on my chin, and, and I was being her. And everybody was laughing until suddenly it went really quiet, and apparently Sister Elizabeth walked in behind me. But it was very nicely done. They just sort of explained to my mother that it wasn't probably the right place for me. The sisters at the convent school may not have appreciated it, but Vanola was a born entertainer. I definitely was a ham. I definitely would dance and put on shows. When Finola was eight, her brother Sean joined the family. I have to say it was a huge relief when my brother was born because I've been living with these two enormous characters, um, my mother and my father, alone for eight years. And, you know, it, it was a bit much. As Finola grew older and continued her ballet training, her mother kept encouraging her. It was because she loved her, and she, you know, she knew that there was some, something special there. In 1970, at the age of 10, Finola was enrolled at the Arts Educational School, an institution devoted to teaching the performing arts. It was a school full of terrible, loud, screaming children wanting to perform. They opened the door and all these awful, dreadful children ran in, and I was one of them, and I was like, I'm home, this is it. Fantastic. Over the next few years, Vanola stayed so busy with her dancing that she didn't even have time for boys. I was not a very interesting teenager in that respect. I think I, I really enjoyed my work and I really enjoyed ballet. Vanola's plans for becoming a professional dancer were proceeding without a hitch. Then, when she was 16, her mother was diagnosed with breast cancer. When my mom had a mastectomy, I didn't really know what was going on. Um, she said she was ill, she had to go into hospital and have an operation. Finola's mom made it through surgery and told Finola that everything would probably be just fine. And she said to me, if nothing happens within 18 months, I'm clear. 
satisfied that her mom was on the mend, Finola graduated from Arts Educational School and signed a two-year contract with the Northern Ballet Company. At age 17, she had made it, or so she thought. It wasn't easy being in the ballet company because you had to be in the core of the ballet and you weren't supposed to stick out. And that was not me, you know. So I'd constantly get these notes, Finola, what are you doing back there? We're going to keep, keep shifting you further and further back. You've got to just cool it, you know. I want you to be in line with everybody else. Then in 1978, when Finola went home for a visit, she learned that her mother's cancer had returned. Now, literally 18 months to the day, something happened in her leg. Her mother had broken her leg, and when doctors went to treat it, they found her breast cancer had spread. Coming up next, Hope follows heartbreak when Fanola lands a starring role in a blockbuster film. I didn't think it would amount to anything. They said, uh, well, yes, we're going to fly you out to Hollywood. And yes, it, that felt pretty amazing. And later, she becomes half of one of TV's most memorable couples. The two of them are inseparable. I mean, whenever the press talk about it, it's always Robert and Anna. When Lifetime's intimate portrait of Fanola Hughes continues. This program is sponsored by Check Cereals. It's breakfast pure and simple. It's Honey Nut Chex Mix. And Honey is a total buzz. Honey Nut Chex Mix. Get into the mix. Great days deserve great pictures. But what if your pictures come out too dark? Don't take chances. Process with Kodak for true to life pictures. Remember, you have to ask for Kodak processing. So check the box. Check the back. Be sure it's Kodak. instantly, killing germs to leave your mouth feeling so clean, you'll wonder how we did it. Cool Mint Listerine Pocket Packs. Kill the germs, heal the clean. Let's play truth or dare. Truth. When you get a yeast infection, you use one of those messy creams, don't you? Truth. There may be an easier way. It's a pill, Diflucan. Just one pill is as effective as the leading seven-day cream without the mess. And Diflucan is the number one doctor-prescribed yeast infection treatment. Ready for the dare? I dare you to call your doctor and ask about Diflucan. That's all it takes. A simple phone call to learn more about the only pill to treat a yeast infection. Diflucan. Treat a yeast infection with a pill instead of a messy cream. It's your call. With Diflucan, there is an increased possibility of side effects compared with creams, including headache, nausea, and abdominal pain. In rare instances, serious effects on the liver and serious allergic reactions were reported. Do not use Diflucan if you are nursing. If you are pregnant or taking other medications, talk to your doctor. To prevent heart-related complications, do not take Diflucan if you are taking Propulsid. For more information, ask your doctor or visit our website. Diflucan. Lifetime. Television for women. TNT's hit original drama returns with an all-new season. Please hold it! All unit! Shots fired! She's got battle skills that are supernatural. Tonight, New York's toughest cop is back. See an all-new episode, Witchblade. Tonight at 8, only on TNT. 
You had more girls than any playboy. That was sexy. You sailed with your crew everywhere, in style. One of them even joined Congress. I am not Ronald Reagan. He was never on a hit. And you didn't go to Hollywood. Hollywood came to you. With Temptations, Hulk Hogan, and Andrew Warhol. I think I'm the same show. Congratulations, Love Boat. You are biography. Don't miss the Love Boat TVography on biography. Premieres tonight at 7 p.m. on A&D. You're either biography or you're not. An unsolved mystery, this all-new story. Two women of the exact same name, murdered in the same town, hours apart. Both Mary Morris, but only one of them was in fear for her life. Unsolved Mysteries, new stories at 8 p.m. tonight, only on Lifetime. Getting ready for the big day? Need some last-minute advice? Don't fear, Lifetime's bringing you our love and sex expert, Dr. Pepper Schwartz, to answer all of your questions. Just log on to LifetimeTV.com tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific to chat live. Powered by MSN. You're watching Lifetime's intimate portrait of Finola Hughes. Finola Hughes grew up in a working class family in London, England, with a dream of becoming a ballet dancer. But when she was 18, her plans were derailed when she learned her mother's cancer had spread. Finola rushed home to consult with the family doctor. And I walked into her office and I said, what's up with my mom? And she said, right, she she's had a re recurrence of cancer and she has six months to live so i went to the market and i bought some yogurts which is what she was eating at the time and i went home and sat with her and we watched tv that night and i never said anything finola dropped out of the northern ballet company and stayed in notting hill to care for her mother six months later maria hughes died at the age of 49. the driving force in finola's life was gone I think it was difficult for Finola, uh, losing her mother at such an early age. But I think she was very, very brave about it. The loss of her mother was a profound one. She misses her mother. I mean, to the point where um, if I have an argument with my mother, she will sit me down and say, you must make up with your mother immediately because I wish every day that I could talk to my mother. I knew there was a big black hole that I couldn't fall into, and that would be the black hole of, you know, grieving. Finola escaped her grief by turning to work. She was cast in a dancing role in the low-budget film, The Apple. Shooting got underway in 1980 in Berlin. Berlin was extraordinary. I was 18, and I was with a bunch of dancers that I knew, and I was terrified because these dancers were fast and furious and hard, and there was every drug in the world you could get anything on the street. Finola worked on the film and let the nightlife of Berlin distract her from thinking about her mother's passing. Everything was very sad. And I was able to feed my pretense that nothing had happened so I could get on with life. After shooting was over, Finola returned to London. Then a choreographer friend, Gillian Lynn, tipped her off to an upcoming stage production. She'd mentioned that they were going to do this big musical, um, Cats. I just knew that that was for me. And I just knew that if I could get my foot in the door, I was going to be OK. Cats is all dance from start to finish, so I knew I needed something special. And I absolutely insisted on having her. At the audition for Cats, Vanilla used techniques she knew Gillian would like. Like, you know, a little hand move, a little pop, a little... Uh, so she turned it animalistic. It was right up my alley. I mean, because it was ballet and it was organic and um, sexy. She was very sexy. Basically, she just wanted us to be these sort of cats, these crazy kind of cats. I was more than confident that she would be the one. She had the perfect body for it. She had the perfect mind for it. Working closely with Gillian, Vanilla originated the featured role of the white cat. We always conceived the white cat as a girl on the edge of puberty a girl just discovering her body and life. A plum absolutely ripe for being plucked. It was incredibly sexy what she did. When Cats opened in London's West End in May of 1981, it quickly became the hottest ticket in town. That was the first time I really understood why she did what she did. She clearly enjoyed it and got such a kick out of it. Vanilla loved the show but the physical demands of doing eight performances a week soon wore her down. I left after a year, because I think I weighed like 90 pounds and I had to get out of there, because <laughs> it was a hard work. 
Before she left Cats, she started dating an actor starring in another West End musical, a handsome leading man named Michael Prade. I think I'd seen him in the play, and I had told whoever I was with, tell that guy when he takes his curtain call not to cross his legs, because he looks idiot, dumb. So he came over to me at the table and he said, I got your note, and I'm like, sorry? And then we just sort of, you know, struck up. Shortly after Finola and Michael started dating, Finola got a call from casting director Donna Rosenstein. Donna was searching for the perfect female dancer for the sequel to the smash film Saturday Night Fever. We were looking for, first of all, someone incredibly beautiful and an extraordinary dancer because they didn't want to do any dance doubling. The film called Staying Alive was a love triangle that centered on superstar John Travolta. It was to be directed by Sylvester Stallone. They were looking for an English sort of bitchy girl that could dance and thankfully not carry a tune. So they put me on tape. Finola was flown to Hollywood and was soon in a nerve-wracking audition with John Travolta. I was completely horrible. Um, dre dreadful audition, I'm sure. I guess if I could dance and at least speak, I was going to be the one. Sylvester Sloan turned to me and he said, OK, um, you've got the part. And I went, oh. And he said, well, is that it? And I was like, oh, oh thank you. <laughs> and I guess, you know, I was supposed to jump up and down, but I was English. Vinola had the part. But Stallone had very specific ideas about what he wanted her to look like. He sent me to John's trainer. I used to go up to John's house every other night to train with this guy because he wanted to build my buttock. Working alongside John Travolta turned out to be better than expected. I mean, I know that I sucked, mostly. And, and, um, and he was incredibly tolerant of that. Where are you coming from? Why, something wrong? I don't like being led on. Who's leading you on? I call you up, you're not home. I go to your apartment, you're not there, and then I wait all night for you, and you bring some guy home with you. Are you talking to me? Well, we did. It don't mean nothing to you. It was nice. Oh, nice. Like something like you do every day, like having breakfast. I usually skip breakfast. Look, I'll see you later, okay? Where are you going? I'm talking to you. I said later. Come here, I want to talk to you. Take your bloody hands off me. Don't you ever touch me again. Who do you think you're dealing with? Some little groupie that jumps when you call? Is that who you think I am? We met. I liked you. We made it. What do you think it was? True love. And you think I used you. What about you using me? Everybody uses everybody. Don't they? When the film was released in 1983, it failed to find an audience. Even Finola, who was back in London, realized she still had quite a bit to learn. I think I was concerned that I didn't know how to act. I think I was concerned that I wasn't relaxed enough. Though the commercial reception to Staying Alive was a disappointment, Finola hoped she could use her new notoriety to build a career as an actress. To do so would mean leaving London behind. But she and Michael decided it was worth the risk. I thought to myself, oh yeah, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh-huh. I'm supposed to be a big, fat movie star. Yeah. I was determined to work in America. As luck would have it, Michael soon landed a role in a Broadway play. So in the fall of 1984, Finola and Michael moved to New York. This play that he's in Folds, you know, gets the worst review in, in the history of reviews and Folds. And so, um, so I said, well, let's go to L.A. because, you know, there's all kinds of stuff going on out there. Coming up next, Finola's family is faced with another tragic loss. We rallied around as best we could and, um, and tried to get on with our lives without him. And later, she sets off sparks with a real-life romance. He was different. And, and, and I think, in a way, it sort of brought back a little bit of danger that I've been missing. When we return to Lifetime's intimate portrait of Finola Hughes. You're watching Lifetime, television for women. Great news. It's frosted! <laughs> like things frosted, introducing new frosted mini checks. The simple goodness of checks, only smaller, with just the right amount of frosting. New 
frosted mini checks. They're frosted. Wear contacts? Visine for contacts does more than rewet your lenses. It really, really refreshes your eyes. Visine for contacts gets the dry out when contacts are in. Imagine a remarkable winemaker who taught his grandchildren everything he knew. Now imagine his grandchildren arriving in Sonoma, California's premier wine region, and within 10 years winning Winery of the Year in California, gold in France, gold in Italy, best Chardonnay in the world in London. These are the new Sonoma wines of Gina and Matt Gallo. Gallo of Sonoma, new generation, world class. Do you have any idea what's in those mystery meat nuggets? Not a clue. No one does. Try these, Bear. KFC popcorn chicken. All white breast meat, crunchy, juicy. Ooh. KFC popcorn chicken is back. Try an individual size for only $1.99 or a family size for only $6.99. There's fast food, and then there's KFC. KFC popcorn chicken. All white breast meat, crunchy, juicy. It's so good, there's only one way to make it better. Make it free! On Thursday, June 20th, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., come into KFC and try popcorn chicken free! If you've got decorating ideas, the place to bring them is your Sherwin-Williams store for Martha's newest brand, Martha Stewart Signature. Offering oversized punch-out color cards, coordinated color palettes, and 416 colors blended into your choice of Sherwin-Williams paint. Sherwin-Williams quality, Martha Stewart color. Now that's a good thing. Ask how, ask now. Ask Sherwin-Williams. From Beantown to downtown, from Broadway to Jasper Road, Crest is making things a little brighter. Now everything you need for a great smile has a bright new look. One man loves her. One man wants her. One man knows her secrets. One of them wants her dead. Which one? Tell me no secrets. At 9 tonight, part of Lifetime's movies Touched by Terror. Every woman has a story. I've ran 26 marathons. Going to vet school, it was a great decision. I'm an astronaut with NASA. I've flown in space three times. Now there's one place where real stories are brought to life. I've had to prove myself over and over again. Introducing Lifetime Real Women, a brand new network from Lifetime with movies and original series inspired by real life events. The extraordinary is possible every single day. Call your cable or satellite provider today to have them carry Lifetime Real Women. This is Lifetime's intimate portrait of Finola Hughes. Though she was trained as a dancer, by the time she was in her early 20s, British-born Finola Hughes had moved to America with her boyfriend, Michael Prade, and turned her attention to acting. In 1983, a starring role in the film Staying Alive became her calling card. The fact that the film was such a big production and that the names Stallone and Travolta were associated with it. She realized that she'd been plucked from obscurity. Vanola headed to Los Angeles for a few weeks, intent on landing some acting work. I stayed on Donna Rosenstein's couch for like six weeks. And during that time, I was doing auditions. And she came home one day and she said, um, there's something's going on at ABC. And they were looking for a new lead on General Hospital. You know, the search had been going on and on and on. And I just said, I've got the person. The character was Anna Devane, a smart, sophisticated spy. And I go and I audition. For some obscure reason, I hit it on the head. I just understood what they were looking for. It wasn't like, well, you know, it's down to two people and they're both kind of similar. She'd run away with the race altogether. Vanola won the role of super spy Anna Devane. And in 1985, at the age of 24, she joined the cast of General Hospital. I was over the moon, because now I had a job. I had a job. And I didn't know what a soap opera was. I'm like, what's a soap opera? 
On her first day, Fanola had to prepare for a scene with Rogers, who was playing her love interest, the dashing Robert Scorpio. So I walked in, and here was this very poised girl sitting there. And she was running lines, and you know, I introduced myself. And he says, hi, I'm Scorpio. And it became very apparent right from the start, here was a person who could really bring something different to this role. As a newcomer to daytime, Fanola soon attracted a lot of attention. The first time I saw Fanola, I knew she was going to be a star. Because, you know, there are certain people that radiate star quality. Under the guidance of executive producer Gloria Monti, Fanola threw herself into learning everything she could about Anna Devane, the soft-hearted super spy who would later become chief of police. She really wanted this sort of dynamic, strong woman that was incredibly flawed, somebody that follows her heart but yet can fight physically and shoot guns and, you know, be a spy. <laughs> Vanola's portrayal of Anna Devane had made her one of daytime TV's hottest new stars. I was like 18 years old, but we would like, as soon as class was out, we would all get together, and I mean a group of 30 of us, rush home to whoever's parents weren't home, go to their house and put on General Hospital to watch Anna Devane wreak havoc in the town of Port Charles. You said that I was a frump, didn't you? An old nag or a hag. Do you think that I look like a frump now? Do you think that I look like an old hag? I am sexy. I know how to turn someone on. I know how to get dressed up. I know how to tie someone up, obviously. Robert, did you ever write the book on what was sexy? Tell me that. Because if you did, I think you need to look in the mirror. You certainly look quite ridiculous right now. I think people loved her, loved her British accent, loved the way she looked, loved the way she carried herself. She would steal the show instantly. She would instantly steal the scene by just having a reaction. In time, Fanola's co-stars noticed the similarities between the dynamic character she played and Fanola herself. When you're doing a soap for, a, you know, for that period of time, a lot of yourself comes into the role. Ah, oh, you hit me. All right. You hit me. I can't believe you hit me. Are you okay? I heard, Robert. Oh, I feel no. such an idiot. Hmm. I think I would like an explanation. By mid-1985, Vanola had settled into her role on General Hospital. By now, Michael had joined her in Hollywood, and they moved into a house in the hills. Life could hardly have been better. Then one Saturday morning in September, one of Finola's friends came over to the house with devastating news. She said, I didn't want to tell you while somebody was here, but your brother called me and um, your dad had a massive heart attack and he didn't make it. Characteristically, 25-year-old Finola refused to fall apart after her father's death. But her friends say she was deeply affected. She loved her dad very much and she had lost her mom when she was young. I think she felt she had cards that were dealt to her and she would make the best of it. She talked about her parents in a way that I I'm sorry that I never got to meet them because, you know, you feel that she really, you know, just admired and loved and respected them so much. Vanola was concerned about her brother, Sean, who was then just 17. She convinced him to come to Los Angeles to live with her and Michael. I uh, brought him back with me. I, I wanted him to come back to America because there was nobody left for him, you know, in England that he could turn to. Finn took on the, the duty of both my my mother and my father for me. She took care of her brother like, like, like in a wonderful way. I mean, she gave him a huge amount of freedom. She was very nurturing and I think she was very influential in his life. Finola tried not to dwell on the loss of her father. Instead, over the next few years, she helped turn General Hospital into a genuine phenomenon with dramatic storylines, like the one that involved the kidnapping of her daughter Robin by an Asian gang. Probably the most memorable moment as far as the relationship between Anna and Robin was this moment when she found me down in the Asian quarter. The connection with Fanola was always so strong that something like that was just easy. At the same time, Anna's up-and-down love affair with Scorpio became one of the decade's most passionate and popular on-screen romances. 
The history of Anna is that um, when she was really young, she was with Scorpio. They met when they were in Italy, and they got married because they fell in love on the beach, as you do. What people latched onto was the chemistry between the two people. If there's no chemistry, well, people aren't going to like the relationship, but the two of us had a lot of chemistry together. Later, when Anna Devane's marriage to Scorpio officially came to an end, she hardly missed a step when she hooked up with the scoundrel Duke Lavery, played by Ian Buchanan. The character of, uh, that I was playing was this kind of, kind of classic sort of gangster. He was going to seduce this you know, chief of police and end up controlling the law in the city of Port Charles. <gasps> you have many mysterious talents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just think if I did this every night for a hundred years, you'd live to be a very happy old man. <laughs> if we did this every night for six months, I'd be dead. <laughs> they had this friendship that you could tell was real. Uh, they enjoyed each other. They really have a rapport, and they play off of each other, and, and they're great together. Off screen, they became best friends. On screen, they got married, and ratings soared. I learned from her how to, like, pull it together and deliver, you know, have fun at the same time. Eventually, Anna and Duke divorced, and once again, she exchanged vows with Robert Scorpio. This was one of those storylines that I never agreed with. Suddenly, these two are going to get married. I said, come on now, they've been together now for eight years. He turns around, walks in the room, and he's in love with her. What, what, what kind of rubbish is that? Despite Tristan's objections, audiences responded to Anna and Scorpio's marriage. In 1990, Finola earned her first nomination for a Daytime Emmy and won a Soap Opera Digest Award for Best Heroine. But while Finola was getting married time and again on TV, her eight-year relationship with Michael Prade had stopped growing. In the spring of 1990, Finola realized it was over. I don't think we were very suited for each other uh, in the end, and um, um, this is my interview, so it was mostly his fault. <laughs> After her relationship with Michael ended, Fanola didn't have to wait long for some good news. It came at the daytime Emmys for 1990. So I, I, I'm in London and I'm getting my green card, which is a big deal for me because I've been in America for seven years. and. Um, and I get a call, when I get back to the hotel, um, there's all these messages and that, I, that I'd won the Emmy. So I call my brother and 13 of his friends and we have curry. And that was my Emmy celebration, which is only funny if you're British. But less than a year later, Fanola's award-winning eight-year run on General Hospital would come to an abrupt end. She had been tapped to star in a new primetime series. That caused some tension on the soap. Basically, what happened was uh, I got cast in this Jack's Place, which was for the ABC network, so it was all in-house. And I was going to leave to do this uh, primetime show, and, um, and I was at the end of the contract, and, and, and I sort of wanted to just, you know, go and do something else for a while. General Hospital executive producer Gloria Monti wasn't thrilled that Fanola was leaving the soap. A week before Fanola's scheduled departure, Monti pulled the plug. We were shooting out at a Christmas sort of scene with Kimberly, and Gloria came up and said this was my last scene on the show and that uh, I should enjoy it, and that was sort of it. But I just remember everyone being really disappointed and really blindsided, like, okay, what just happened? <laughs> you know? It was a real interruptus, because we had to bring somebody else in to fill those shoes because the storyline was there, and they couldn't just say, okay, let's throw it away and start again. We had to finish it. Coming up next, Fanola does double duty in her return to daytime. She's enough of a performer. She's that good that she can make Anna, and then in an hour, she switches to Alex. And later, after playing a mother on screen, Fanola decides to try it in real life. Oh, the birth of Dylan was fantastic. He was so sweet, and here he is. When Lifetime's intimate portrait of Fanola Hughes continues. Catch exciting new stories on Unsolved Mysteries next. Then at 9, don't miss Lori Laughlin and Tell Me No Secrets, followed by the Golden Girls at 11, only on Lifetime. Jenny's pretty down about missing the baseball game, huh? Yeah, she sure is. <sighs> Hold on a second. Ballpark Franks have a big hearty taste that's made for the outdoors. They plump when you cook them. 
Take one and pass it down. Here we go. Thanks, Dad. Sure, honey. That'll be 350. Daddy. <laughs> Ballpark Franks. They plump when you cook them. Excuse me, ma'am. Can I have a moment of your time? True or false? I enjoy frosting in the morning. True. Raise the roof. Try to remain professional, sweets. True or false, sir? A nutritionally sound cereal is important to me. True. Bravo. Add a notch to the wheat tally. Whatever. Okay. That's 43 likes for the sweet side and 43 likes for the wheat side. So what have we learned? I've learned time at the mall is better spent buying shirts. Shirts? You don't wear clothes and you have no arms. Speak for yourself. The best way to relieve dry eyes, your own natural tears. They lubricate, protect, and hold in moisture. Visine tears do the same thing. They lubricate, protect, and hold in moisture. So how can your eyes tell the difference between their own natural tears and ours? They can't. So get Visine tears in and get the dry out naturally. What if you could capture radiance in a bottle? Now you can with an amazing new facial moisturizer from Avino. Introducing Positively Radiant Daily Moisturizer. Only Avino has an exclusive soy complex proven to soften and even tone, while natural light diffusers give your skin a healthy glow. Let your natural radiance shine through. New Avino Positively Radiant Moisturizer. Discover nature's secret for naturally radiant skin. Let's play truth or dare. Truth. When you get a yeast infection, you use one of those messy creams, don't you? Truth. There may be an easier way. It's a pill. Diflucan. Just one pill is as effective as the leading seven-day cream without the mess. And Diflucan is the number one doctor-prescribed yeast infection treatment. Ready for the dare? I dare you to call your doctor and ask about Diflucan. That's all it takes. A simple phone call to learn more about the only pill to treat a yeast infection. Diflucan. Treat a yeast infection with a pill instead of a messy cream. It's your call. With Diflucan, there is an increased possibility of side effects compared with creams, including headache, nausea, and abdominal pain. In rare instances, serious effects on the liver and serious allergic reactions were reported. Do not use Diflucan if you are nursing. If you are pregnant or taking other medications, talk to your doctor. To prevent heart-related complications, do not take Diflucan if you are taking Propulsid. For more information, ask your doctor or visit our website. Diflucan. American Beauty bucks up as bombshell. I just wanted to be an actress. Intimate Portrait, Brooke Shields. Tomorrow night at 7, only on Lifetime. You're watching Lifetime's intimate portrait of Fanola Hughes. Throughout most of the 1980s, dancer-turned-actress Fanola Hughes had been one of the stars of ABC's high-rated soap opera, General Hospital. When she left the show in 1991, it wasn't the joyful parting she was hoping for. But true to form, 31-year-old Fanola took the change in stride. Okay, so... This is the reality, this is what happened, but I'm going to do this now, so I'm going to move on. I think something that I definitely learned from her is just to get on with it. No matter what happens, you just have to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and just get out and get on with it. Finola refused to look back. She eagerly joined the cast of the primetime series Jack's Place, co-starring Hal Linden and John Dye. I mean, I've so enjoyed Jack's Place, and it was really a fabulous time and I was working with this incredible little actor John Dyke and we were doing this little light romantic comedy um, and it was really a sweet little show sort of magical along with her new show Vanola also met a new man British music video director Russell Young opinions vary about who fell first she walked into a party um, that I was having and it was love I guess at first sight I think she liked him instantly, and I think he was, I think it took him probably a little longer. I thought he looked cute in leather pants, and that was it, really. And then he asked me out a week later. Finola and Russell started dating, 
And things soon turned serious. He's kind of a bit mad, really. It's sort of great. I mean, I, I, that's what I liked. He was different. Just four months later, Russell blindfolded Finola and drove her to Death Valley. There, he donned angel wings for a most unusual marriage proposal. I lead her out across this salt flat, right into the middle of this incredible place, all white crystallized salt. And I take, I get down on my knee, put the ring on a rock, and hold it up to her. I say, take the blindfold off. Russell is kneeling there in front of me in a pair of leather pants and this enormous pair of white angel wings. He's got a huge rock of salt in his hand, and in it is a ring. And before I can even say, will, will you, she has grabbed the ring, just grasped it, and like, the whole rock's just like crumbled in my hand. And I said yes. And, um, and that, was, that was how he proposed to me. It was really cool. The wedding was planned while Finola went on location to star in the feature film Aspen Extreme. Producers for that project went to extremes themselves to get Finola on board. They want a skier, she doesn't ski, and they're like, well, we want Finola Hughes, so we'll get a skier to do the skiing that looks like Finola Hughes. Where you going? I have a private lesson. I know. I hired you for the day. I figured you'd be mad and I wanted to see you. And it worked. I didn't do anything that, I didn't ski. I didn't do the swimming, I didn't do the naked bits. And, um, and I didn't do the, the humping in bed. So uh, I did the talking. <laughs> After shooting was over, Finola and Russell headed to a tiny medieval church in Stoke Gabriel, England for their fantasy wedding. And she looked so beautiful. I mean, she looked perfect. The ceremony went off without a hitch on July 4th, 1992. We thought Independence Day was a good day to, to give up your independence. And um, we had lots of American friends come over and we had a big tent in the middle of a huge field. We had a quartet. Um, it was lovely. We all had a, uh, a terrific time. It was a huge party afterwards. It was just as near perfect, I think, as you get. After the honeymoon, it was time to return to reality. Just a few months later, Finola learned that Jack's place wasn't going to survive past its second season. It was fine. I remember packing up my trailer and it was like, okay, so we'll do the next thing. It was fine. It was, you know, it was a good show, but if they cancel it, they cancel it. What are you going to do? Finola was used to change. Having worked on everything from sitcoms to period dramas, with such leading men as Michael York, Richard Thomas, and Sir John Gielgud, one of her favorite film roles was the thriller The Dark Side of Genius, in which she played an overly inquisitive patron of the arts. I don't understand why you won't give me his number. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Where's he been? What happened to him? Where's he going? I mean, there's a thousand questions about him. You give me the number of any one of these artists in a second. Oh, come on, this is going to be a great story, Sharon. I really liked that, doing that movie. I really enjoyed it. I felt like I was really grungy. Finola was happy to try on different roles, but it was her triumphant return to daytime TV in 1999 that really made headlines. She was everything I thought she'd be. She was very um, happy to come on board, and that was my, my main concern. I was, I was concerned whether she would be happy here in New York on this show, in this genre. The show was All My Children, and Finola's castmates were thrilled about her arrival. I still, to this day, think she thought I was a crazy person, because I was shaking. Shaking. Come on. There's a soulfulness. There's a commitment. Uh, there's a professionalism that... Uh, you know it when you see an actor like that. At first, Finola portrayed Alexandra Devane, sister of the character she played on General Hospital. Then, producers decided to bring back Anna, too. The only catch was, Anna was dead. Well, she was blown up in a boat. <laughs> but the, th the, the thing about being on a soap opera is being dead means never having to decompose. In no time at all, Anna returned from beyond the grave. The solution is simple. You cut me loose and you get on with your life. No, we've already had this conversation. I'm going to get you well, and that's the end of it. Fine, all right, so you saved my life, but I don't want it to be at the expense of yours. I don't want you living in my shadow. I have earned my enemies, same way that you've earned your happiness. 
it was a relief to play Anna um, because I knew her and I knew she's down and gritty and, and in your face a bit more and people expect that from her and also there was the comfort of fans that liked her so I felt like I had them behind me on General Hospital Anna Devane had been a spy who often ran afoul of the law now on all my children she became a police chief sworn to uphold it and she enjoyed her new love affair with Dr. David Hayward, played by Vincent Irizarry. What happened in there? I know, I know, I lost it. I, I, I walked in, I saw Vanessa with a pillow over Maggie's face, and I just no. lost it. What happened in there was remarkable. Oh, you're right. I was trying to strangle the life out of my mother. That's commendable. You were protecting your cousin. I was protecting my cousin from the hands of my mother. Do you realize how insane that is? I love working with somebody of her caliber because I respect her opinion. And that's a very rare connection that you can have sometimes with a co-actor. So if I'm around somebody that's a little more dangerous, then, then I get pushed a little bit. So things kind of snap, rather than being lulled into something comfortable, which I can be if I'm with somebody who's just good looking. Fine, I'll go first. <laughs> OK, there. Here goes. <sighs> oh, you're going to wrestle me? You're going to Dr. David Hayward. What's his name? This is the last place I expected to be tonight, and this is the last thing I expected to be doing. Oh, words of love. I'm getting there, okay? However, oddly enough, I'm having a wonderful time because it is so unexpected, and you know how I hate to be bored. The one thing that the audience loves is not only Finola, but they love Finola and Vincent Irizarry together as a couple. So I think what, what the audience will see is a lot more of that. Coming up next, Vanola starts the millennium with her most challenging role to date. I mean, this was like all the things she ever dreamed of. When we return to Lifetime's intimate portrait of Vanola Hughes. Lifetime, television for women. By moonlight they harvest. Little workers gathering sheaves of golden wheat for their delicious Keebler Wheatables crackers. Stone ground in a hollow tree. The grain is worked by tiny hands to ready it for the most important step. Gentle baking in magic ovens to produce delicious wheat crackers so lightly sweet and crunchy they could only be made by elves. Okay, we're a little obsessive, but we make a darn tasty cracker. Lightly sweetable, crunchy Wheatables. Wear contacts? Visine for contacts does more than re-wet your lenses. It really, really refreshes your eyes. Visine for contacts gets the dry out when contacts are in. I'm doing it on my way to work. At work. I'm doing it while I get ready. Today, over four million people have done Crest White Strips. These thin, flexible strips make it easy to whiten your teeth almost anytime, anywhere. In just two weeks, you'll get a noticeably wider smile that lasts at least six months. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> Crest White Strips. Reveal your whiter smile. Guaranteed. Did you know for the 25th anniversary of the Denny's Grand Slam breakfast, you can get them seven days a week for just $2.99? That's a problem. Why? It's a deal so good, even we can't complain. Oh! <laughs> the delicious $2.99 Grand Slam, right now at Denny's. Great days deserve great pictures. But what if your pictures come out too dark? Don't take chances. Process with Kodak for true to life pictures. Remember, you have to ask for Kodak processing. So check the box. Check the back. Be sure it's Kodak. You're watching Lifetime, television for women. Why Colbert Custom Framing? Because we really work hard at doing what we do. Custom framing for your home, office, or gift, no matter what your taste. Did you know adhesives may distort and damage your needle art? We're experts at stretching needlework using acid-free foam pour and straight pins, a quality archival method of mounting your art. The Colbert family has provided quality framing since 1987. We'd like you to know what thousands of people already know. At Colbert Custom Framing, you're, you're going, going to, to love, love it. it. You can do it. Don't blame 
yourself, Jimmy. Blame the dish. It's the only place we could get decent reception. Satellite TV can be a major disappointment. But with AT&T Digital Cable, there's no dish, no hassles, problem solved. An unsolved mystery, this all-new story. Two women of the exact same name, murdered in the same town, hours apart. Both Mary Morris, but only one of them was in fear for her life. Unsolved Mysteries, new stories, next, only on Lifetime. This is Lifetime's intimate portrait of Finola Hughes. After two successful decades in daytime television, Vanola Hughes had proven that she knew how to accept life's disappointments, yet never stop moving forward. There was only one thing missing, a baby. When she finally did get pregnant in 2000, she tried to keep it a secret, even from her closest friends. I thought she had breast augmentation, and I was very angry because we had always decided that we would do it together. I can't believe she did it without me. Evil, horrible woman. And my husband sort of looked at her and he said, I think I know something about you. He just knew it. And I looked at him and I grinned because I couldn't hide it from him, you know. He just looked me straight in the face and he turned to Kelly and I saw the two of them. And I knew the game was up. This was a very big deal in their lives. I mean, they really wanted to have a child. It was sort of their mission. God, she wanted that baby. I mean, this was like all the things she ever dreamed of. Of course, Vanola's pregnancy meant certain adjustments would have to be made on all my children. There was one terrible moment when I was dressed as Titania, like this enormous overweight fairy, and I was being proposed to by John Callahan, dressed as an ass. And I began to think, okay, if my career's not over now, I'm certainly gonna be on the where are they now list by next week. Finally, on November 9th, 2000, Finola and Russell welcomed their son, Dylan Joseph. It was the best moment of my life. We had these Buddhist chants playing, and, um, and he burst into the room, um, you know, blood and guts and energy, and it was fantastic. Finola has thrown herself into motherhood with the same commitment she's shown in her acting. Women who are very, very committed in their lives, in all areas, their work, their relationships, their family. When a child comes into that life, that same kind of commitment takes over, and it did for her. She brings all of her personality to mothering. She loves him, I mean, more than, more than life itself. I really enjoy it. I mean, it's really, it's really what I wanted, and I knew it would be like this. Bye. 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 Today, after nearly two decades of driving daytime viewers to distraction, Vanola takes her life in the spotlight in stride. Everywhere you go, there's like, let's say Anna or General Hospital or all my children, and, and it's, it's amazing how many people know her. I don't think fame's affected her at all. I think she's exactly the same person that I met in 1980, and I can't imagine she would have been any different before she did Cats or before she did Staying Alive. Everybody who's ever worked with her has a great deal of respect for her, from people from cast, that she's from, from her peer group to, to crew. She's loved. She doesn't give herself the kind of credit that she deserves, because she's very humble, and she doesn't make a big deal out of it. She's not easily impressed by herself or by anything else, which is great. Vanola's friends and colleagues say that these days, she's at the top of her game. She can do anything she wants. I mean, she's in such a great position because she's really talented. And, you know, I think she could continue on the soaps or she could do something else. She's always been a superstar to me. But she's just a, she's a super person. So whatever she wants, I hope the world gives to her. I hope she reigns omnipotent over the universe. True to her nature, Vanola's dreams are more down to earth. She already feels she has more than enough. I think for the future, just more of the same. I mean, I'm really happy right now. This is a nice golden moment, you know, with family and friends and a cool job. And I'd like to do more of this, just keep doing this. What I wouldn't give for her sense of style. But even though Finola Hughes calls herself a fashionista, she swears that she's not shallow. And knowing her as well as I do, trust me, she's not. For Lifetime's Intimate Portrait, I'm Meredith Vieira.
At 7 tomorrow night on Intimate Portrait. American Beauty box office bombshell. Brooke Shields came of age in a cloud of controversy. I remember being thrown into the frenzy, and I was shocked. The face of the 80s faces the future. I just wanted to be an actress. The rest really just didn't appeal to me. As she learns how to overcome a tragic loss. Intimate Portrait, Brooke Shields. At 7, tomorrow night on Lifetime. Television. Yours will never be the same. Next on Lifetime's Intimate Portrait. Playing Anna Devane on General Hospital made Fanola Hughes one of daytime TV's reigning divas. Is this all I had to do? Is dress up in underwear? For you to look at me? For some obscure reason, I hit it on the head. I just understood what they were looking for. She still can steal a scene from anybody instantaneously just by entering the room. She's so proper royalty. On General Hospital, she was involved in one of the soap world's all-time great romances. The earth really moved. <laughs> what people latched onto was the chemistry between the two people. She earned awards and critical acclaim to go along with her fame. The outstanding actress in a leading role of daytime is Vanilla Hughes, General Hospital. But she got her first break working with two of Hollywood's biggest stars. Sylvester Stallone turned to me and he said, uh, you've got the part. But life posed new challenges when both her parents died. Finn took on the, the duty of both my, my mother and my father for me. Then she found a real-life romance to rival anything she'd experienced on screen. He's got a huge rock of salt in his hand and in it is a ring. And he said, will you marry me? Before too long, she started a family of her own. But her most surprising... Sort of a uh, bohemian dive. Finola was the first child of parents who could not have been more different. Her Italian mother, Maria, was a devout feminist who loved the performing arts. My mother was quite brash and straightforward and in your face, and she'd tell you what she thought of you the minute she met you. Finola's father, Bill, drove a taxi and was something of a philosopher. What my father really was, was he was an extraordinary character. This huge, ebullient kind of Irishman, you know, drinker and a party man, and everything was fun. Finola was the center of her mom and dad's universe, with a personality that combined a little of each of them. Bill was a sort of adoring father. He'd have done anything for her, whereas Maria was more sort of strict and matter-of-fact and business-like about things. It was more important to, I think, Finola's mother that instead of Finola cleaning her room, it was more important for her to be a creative person who was in touch with herself and who was in touch with the world around her. Finola's mom encouraged her creativity by taking her to a ballet class when she was just three. She took me to this uh, little door and I looked through the door and there were all these ballet dancers and tutus and she said, would you like to do that? And I was like, I felt a little shy at first, but then, yes. Finola started ballet classes almost immediately. When it was time for her formal education to begin, she was sent to a convent. Okay, so I made that part up, but the rest of it is true. This is her story, her words. During the 1980s, Finola Hughes reigned supreme as one of the stars of General Hospital. Her character, secret agent Anna Devane, was involved in a long-running love affair with fellow spy Robert Scorpio. I don't want to have to deal with the thought of losing you again. But when Finola left the show in 1991, she thought her soap opera days were behind her. Then, in 1999, ABC executives realized they never should have let her leave. I knew that ABC had to have Finola, so I spoke with the writers at All My Children about the possibility. I said, don't toy with me. <laughs> Would you really be interested? Angela said, what do you think about New York? And I'm like, oh, I love New York. And she said, do you think you'd like to go there, move there, and go on All My Children? I was like, e a y a yes. Finola's new castmates at All My Children eagerly awaited her arrival. I thought it was great. You know, I think to bring somebody of that caliber onto a show, you can't help but elevate the bar of the show. She's a wonderful performer. Uh, she has great depth. 
I don't think there was a person on our show that didn't know, respect, and love her work and couldn't believe our good fortune that she was coming. Finola returned to daytime TV as Anna Devane's long-lost twin sister, Alex. I don't care whether you believe me or not. I don't have to prove who I am to you. I'm just trying to tell you everything because Dimitri loved you so much. But if you're going to turn this into a cross-questioning and try and trick me up with misinformation, then I don't have to tell you anything. Look, we're just trying to find out what's happened, Mrs. Oh, you don't have to call me Mrs. Marrick. Please, just call me Alex. Fans were glad Vanola was back. Then 18 months later, they were stunned when she told Regis and Kelly Ripa that her character Anna Devane was coming back too. All right, so what happened? You died on, uh, on General Hospital, but right. now you're back. Well, can the audience, can the American audience uh, understand this? Yes, can a boat explosion this? was not enough to kill off Anna Devane. So she came back, Anna Devane, but now yes. she's back as twins. Yes, it's the show, they're going to change the show to All My Finolas. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember being very sort of excited that she was going to get to play Anna Devane again. The audience loved the character of Anna as much as Finola loves the character of Anna. So for everyone, it was an opportunity to, to see someone that they hadn't seen in years. The woman who would grow up to portray a spy began her life in a country known for its fictional secret agents. Finola Hughes was born on October 29th, 1960, in an artsy London neighborhood. I grew up in a place called Notting Hill Gate, uh, which sort of became, you know, well known because of the movie Notting Hill. But when I grew up there, it was it was. Being triumph was a return to the soap world after nearly a decade. The thing about being on a soap opera is being dead means never having to decompose. For her to come to all my children after all those years, that audience came with her. I went, oh, she's back. Life has thrown her a few curves, but she's always picked herself up and started over without missing a beat. This is Lifetime's intimate portrait of Finola Hughes. Lifetime's Intimate Portrait, hosted by Meredith Vieira. The other day I was coming off the elevator in the building where all my children shoots, and who do I run into but Alexandra Devane? Or was that Anna Devane? It is so hard to keep track since both are played to perfection by the Emmy Award-winning Finola Hughes. And if you're wondering why Finola is so sensational on All My Children, it's probably because her own life reads like a soap opera. Beautiful ingenue comes to America, lands a plum roll on General Hospital, and then mysteriously disappears, is kidnapped and held for ransom by a crazy makeup artist.